The Fiemann Belt Tunnel is one of the most ambitious infrastructure projects in Europe, aiming to create a new link between Denmark and Germany. The tunnel is set to transform travel and trade in the region and has the potential to bring major economic benefits. But the project faces challenges, both technical and political, that could derail its success. Will it be able to overcome these hurdles? The Fiemann Belt project aims to create the world's longest road and rail tunnel, connecting northern Germany to Lowland and further to the Danish islands of Zealand and Copenhagen. This tunnel is set to become a crucial link between Central Europe and Scandinavia, significantly reducing travel times. Currently, the journey from Lowland to Fiemann takes approximately 45 minutes by ferry, not accounting for waiting and boarding times. With the completion of the Fiemann Belt Tunnel, this travel time will be drastically shortened to just 10 minutes by car and a mere 7 minutes by train. The high-speed rail line within the tunnel will have the capacity to reach speeds of up to 200 km per hour. The Fiemann Belt Tunnel will replace the heavily utilised ferry service operating between Rodby and Puttgarten, currently managed by Scandlines. The completion of this tunnel is expected to streamline transportation, enhancing connectivity between Fiemann, Lowland and the broader European network. But if there's one thing that sets this tunnel apart, it's its unique characteristics and design. Underwater tunnels are usually created by tunnel boring and immersion. Tunnel boring is typically used for deep water tunnels exceeding 4 or 5 kilometers, while immersion is more suitable for tunnels spanning relatively shallow waters. On the other hand, immersion involves dredging a trench on the sea floor, establishing a foundation with sand or gravel, and lowering pre-cast concrete tunnel sections into the trench. The sections are then covered with a protective layer of backfill. So, which one are the designers of this project using? The Fiemann Belt is opting for an immersed tunnel approach. This tunnel, once completed, will hold the record as the world's longest immersed tunnel, surpassing the 13.5km Marmaray Tunnel in the Bosphorus, Turkey. Denmark's Fiemann AS project manager announced the selection of an immersed tunnel design submitted by the Rambol, Arup and TEC consortium. This tunnel is set to be the longest combined road and rail tunnel globally, the longest underwater road tunnel, the deepest immersed tunnel accommodating road and rail traffic, and the second deepest concrete immersed tunnel. The Fiemann Belt Trench's deepest section is 35 meters, and the tunnel sections will stand about 10 meters high. Dredging barges with the capability to reach depths exceeding 45 meters are essential for this project. Dredging will create a trench 40 to 50 meters wide and 12 to 15 meters deep, resulting in a massive 20 million cubic meters of soil to be dredged. Conventional dredging equipment is limited to about 25 meters in depth, so grab dredges and trailing suction hopper dredges may be necessary for the deeper sections. The precast concrete tunnel sections for the Fiemann Belt Tunnel will have a rectangular cross section, measuring about 40 meters wide and 10 meters high. The sections will include four passageways, two for cars, two for trains, and a small service passageway. The northbound and southbound tubes for vehicles will be 11 meters wide each, with two travel lanes and a breakdown lane. The train passageways will be 6 meters wide and 10 meters high for both northbound and southbound directions. A 3 meter wide service passageway will also be included. The overall width, including standoff space, will be 41.2 meters. The arrangement of road and rail tubes side by side aligns with existing infrastructure, eliminating the need for complex weaving connections. The tunnel is set to be a marvel of engineering, comprising 79 basic parts, each stretching 217 meters. Picture it like the Drogden Trench, but friendlier. It's not just a tunnel, it's a system of two road tubes, an emergency tube for unforeseen events, and two rail tubes for efficient transportation. In addition to its functionality, there will be 10 service elements. These are like the tunnels backstage, with each one extending 85.7 meters. They're not only wider and taller, but also equipped with a subfloor, acting as a sort of basement. The basement will be the home to all the technical gear, making sure everything runs smoothly. Now let's delve into how this ingenious structure will work. 
The two road tubes will let cars zip through, ensuring a smooth flow of traffic. Meanwhile, the emergency tube stands ready for any unexpected situations, providing a safe escape route. On the rail side, the two rail tubes promise swift and efficient train travel. As for the service elements, they are the unsung heroes. These wider and taller sections, equipped with a subfloor, will house all the technical wizardry. Think of them as the control room, ensuring that everything from ventilation to lighting operates seamlessly. No doubt huge projects like this require huge finances and support, but the good news is they have it all figured out. Back in March 2009, when the Danish Folketing officially approved the Fiamman Belt Fixed Link project, the initial cost projection stood at 42 billion Danish kroner, 5 billion euro. This comprehensive estimate encompassed various enhancements, such as the electrification and upgrade of 160 kilometers of railway from single track to double track on the Danish side, totaling 1.5 billion euro. Subsequently, in 2011, the overall estimate rose to 5.5 billion euro. Additionally, there was a separate allocation of at least 1 billion euro designated for the German rail connection, which was to be covered by the German government. Financing for the Fehrmann Belt fixed link would primarily rely on state-guaranteed loans repaid through road and train tolls. Denmark took on the responsibility of guaranteeing funding for the project, amounting to an estimated cost of 4.7 billion euros. German involvement was limited to the development of land-based facilities on the German side. As part of the agreement, the Danish government would exclusively own the fixed link, retain toll revenues after loan repayment, and capitalize on potential job opportunities at the toll station. The collected fees were also earmarked for the upgrade of the Danish railway system. On the German front, the project entailed widening the road to four lanes and doubling the railway track, all funded directly by the German government, without imposing tolls on users. Recognizing the significance of the Fehrmann Belt Fixed Link, the European Union designated it as one of the 30 prioritized transport infrastructure projects, 10T. To facilitate its realization, the EU committed a subsidy ranging from 600 million euro to 1.2 billion euro. This substantial investment was anticipated to yield a 5% rate of return for Europe. The construction estimates for the project spanned a considerable time frame from April 1, 1998 to 2021. As of now, the estimated cost stands at an impressive $7.5 billion. But financing this project doesn't seem like as much of a problem. There's a more serious problem facing this project, and we're about to reveal that now. The first thing you should know is that the idea of a crossing over the Fehrmann Belt has been in discussion since the time before Germany's reunification. Yes, you heard that right. Back then, the only plausible route was toward Hamburg, given the infeasibility of connecting to communist East Germany. Despite significant political and economic changes in Europe, the vision for the Fehrmann Belt fixed link has endured. Some critics argue that the Cold War era conception of this link, prioritizing the connection between Copenhagen and Berlin, and on a broader scale creating a link from Scandinavia to the former Warsaw Pact countries, remains a matter of contentious debate. In response to this, a proposed Getzer Rostock bridge, situated about 50 kilometers, 31 miles further east, has emerged as an alternative or complementary solution to the Fehmarn Belt fixed link. Proponents of this alternative argue that it could better connect eastern Germany, including Berlin and areas further east and south, with Scandinavia. Notably, despite an offer from the Danish Cyclist Federation to contribute to the tunnel's costs, there are no plans to include a cycle path in the project. On the German side, local objections have arisen, expressing concerns about potential job losses tied to the existing busy ferry traffic. Critics argue that the employment generated by construction would be short-term, while residents would endure increased traffic, especially from planned freight trains diverting from the current Jutland Great Belt Fixed Link route. Noise concerns, particularly the potential rise in train noise, have prompted vocal opposition, leading to a realignment of the planned railway route. Moreover, there are claims questioning the economic justification of the project. Skeptics argue that predictions of passenger traffic and goods transport might be overly optimistic, posing a significant risk that the investment may not be recovered. 
The European Court of Auditors has criticized the planning of the German land connection, citing uncontrolled cost escalation. The project's cost has soared to more than double the anticipated amount, primarily due to deviations from the originally decided speed of 160 km per hour for the railway, as required by legal standards. Local lobbyists have played a role in influencing aspects like realignment and additional noise protection. That's not all. The project raises concerns about its environmental impact on the marine ecosystem and coastal areas. But from the deep research we have done, this issue can be fixed. To address these challenges, various techniques can be employed to maintain equilibrium. Firstly, comprehensive environmental impact assessments EIAs, can be conducted, considering factors such as water quality, marine life and coastal habitats. This allows for informed decision-making and the implementation of mitigation measures. In terms of construction, advanced tunnelling technologies can minimise disturbance to the seabed and reduce the project's overall ecological footprint. Utilising tunnel boring machines with precision engineering helps protect marine ecosystems while advancing the tunnel's construction efficiently. Further, sustainable construction materials and methods can be incorporated to minimise environmental harm. This includes the use of eco-friendly concrete and innovative construction techniques that reduce energy consumption and waste generation. Ensuring the success of the Fiman Belt Tunnel project will also involve fostering effective collaboration among environmentalists, engineers and policymakers. This collaborative effort is vital for maintaining a balance between technological advancement and environmental conservation. By embracing a holistic approach, the project aims to become a beacon of responsible infrastructure development. If all goes according to plan, the Fiman Belt Tunnel is anticipated to reach completion in 2028, marking a significant milestone in sustainable and thoughtful infrastructure initiatives. But, as usual, we value your opinions a lot. What do you think about this project? Share your thoughts in the comments section below, and don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. For more updates on this project and other projects happening around the world, subscribe to this channel. Until the next one, stay safe.